Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Yelani has been kind enough to join us on Africa Sports Consultancy this evening. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody and Happy New Year to you, Yelani. Oh, thank you. Happy New Year to everyone that's listening as well. And thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. It's actually an honor for me because um, you're the second Proteus Lady player to grace us with your presence. So we've rolled out the red carpet for you tonight. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And obviously, we, we, we're still in lockdown and we. Life has been very different for us the last few months. Um, hopefully it doesn't get to a year, but how have you found it, obviously, as a professional cricketer? I think, yeah, it's been tough, um, especially in the beginning where we couldn't uh, really practice and stuff. So the hard lockdown, the level five lockdown was quite tough. Uh, we tried to keep ourselves busy in our backyards, those type of things. Um, some of us don't even have a backyard, so doing a few push-ups, sit-ups, running on the spot, uh, those type of things, trying to keep fit. And then, yeah, so as soon as we could hit our practices, we started off with small groups, three or actually one-on-ones. And then eventually we got to three, four in a group. And then I think in October somewhere there, we eventually, or November actually, we managed to get team practices in as well. And now we're sitting again, cricket has been cancelled till 1st of Feb. So, and we were supposed to play our first games this weekend coming. So it's quite tough now that we, we've worked so hard towards this weekend coming. And now it's all been cancelled again till further notice. So it's been tough cricket-wise. Um, I think the rest have been good for everyone just to relax a bit. But now everyone's hungry to play and we're all excited. And now just COVID is messing it up again. Wow, that's... That, that's the story for everyone. And look, you, you've at least managed to get out in the park, do some sort of training and some sort of play. And you're looking very fit and healthy. So very grateful for that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think uh, we managed to get a few warm-up games in as well. So it's been good. It's Like I say, we've been managing to train together as well. And we were basically ready. We pulled up nicely for this weekend just to know, oh, now we have to wait another three weeks before we can maybe play. So, yeah, but I think the team's looking well as well and everyone's been working hard. That's fantastic to hear, Yelani. And look, I've got so many questions for you. I've been thinking, what am I going to ask you? What do the viewers want to hear? And I want to just dive straight to it. Um, get right into it and find out who's Yelani. Before we get to the, the superstar pro tier, but who's Yelani and has it always been cricket? Uh, no, not always just cricket. I don't want to say um, just cricket. I've been, well, I used to play hockey. I did athletics at school. I just came to my trick. I had to decide, okay, either or, and I decided to take cricket more serious. I still played uh, hockey after school, played um university hockey, those type of things. Uh, but uh, cricket has always been my passion. So I just took that, or I focused more on cricket and took that further. And yeah, besides cricket, I'm a teacher as well. I teach at a boys' school at King Edward Prep School. And yeah, that, taking the cricket further there, I must say it's the first for a boys' school to have a female cricket coach. And I'm head of cricket there as well. So I'm breaking boundaries, not just on the cricket field, but off the cricket field as well. I absolutely love it, Yelani. You know, to see the woman taking the forefront, little child being empowered and also spreading the game, that motivates other young girls out there to see that there's actually a hope and a future for them. And for me, before we jump into that, and I've got lots of questions for you around you and your teaching, but before we jump into that, how how did you fall into cricket? It was Because it's, it's always a, a, a nice backyard story to start it off, but I, I wonder how you got into it. Yeah, I think for most girls, it's playing backyard cricket with your brother or that type of thing. And that's how mine started. And then um, I never played primary school where there's a few girls that play primary school cricket with the boys, those type of thing. I was never really, I was always focusing hockey, netball, those type of things at primary school. 
And then I decided I was actually entered into a high school, a girls' school and stuff. And then last minute I changed my mind and went to a different high school where there was girls' cricket, and that's where it started. Oh, fantastic. And again, congratulations to you breaking barriers, you know, leading the way. Um, I was wondering how your friends with Sean Mayers, now I know why, you both are leaders um, <laughs> and trailblazers in, in your space. Try. And <laughs> for me, what, what immediately jumps out at me is playing for the pro tiers on one hand, and then on the other hand, you say you're a full-time teacher. How do you manage to balance those two? Oh, it's quite tough, I must say. Um, it's basically, we're not like the men that's all, even the 14 contracted players where we wake up, we go gym, we go practice, we have lunch, we gym a bit more, then it's team practice, that type of thing. Unfortunately not. I have to, basically I get up, if there's time, I get a bit of fitness in, go to work, finish three, four, five o'clock, depending on what sport I have after school. And then basically, you have to push in another hour there of practice or if it's team practice, it makes it a bit easier because then uh, there's a set time and stuff. But if you don't have team practice on the day, it is a bit more difficult um, to set up time aside and those type of things. And not just that, being a female cricketer as well, you have to work, you have to train and then you get home and you still have to cook and those type of things and look after the family, all those type of things. So it does make it difficult. Um, but I've, I've managed most of the time. Uh, there are days where I'm a bit too tired to do anything, coming from work or finish six, seven o'clock at work with cricket or whatever sport. So it's been tough, but um, I think if you've got the will to do it and the drive and everything, you'll manage it. Wow, wow. Juggling a lot of balls here and absolutely fantastic job you're doing at the moment. And is there scope for you to be just a full-time cricketer? Uh, I know you did allude to that, um, that it's different with the ladies cricket in comparison to the men. Um, I wish I could, uh, but when the contracts came out and stuff with SA Cricket, uh, I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't in, in the 14 that got a contract. So I've always been, I had to work to earn money, that type of thing. And I'm, almost to the, towards the end of my career as well. So it's still an aspiration maybe to get full-time into cricket in a different level, maybe coaching or managing or that type of thing instead of maybe playing. Um, but for playing-wise, I think I'll stick to teaching for now and do cricket on the side. Uh, but I'm definitely looking at maybe becoming a full-time cricket coach in women's cricket or Wherever, even boys cricket, men's cricket, you never know. I'm here to break boundaries. So I might just be a first women's coach at a provincial men's team or something. So, yeah, that's my plan. That's my future plan as well. Um, not just to teach, but to take cricket full time and give back to the community as well. Wow. And I'm going to jump back to that in a minute. And uh, look, you're making strides. Yolani. For e Cricket Academy, we've seen it, we've heard about it, and we're going to want to talk about it more just now. And from what you've just told me now about the, the women's game, do you feel that enough is being done for the game locally and abroad? Uh, abroad, definitely. Uh, if you look at the Women's Big Bash, it's insane. They've got full crowds there. England used to have the, the, the Kia Super League as well. It ended I think last year or the year before though and then India's got like a I almost want to call it the mini IPL where they've got um, the three teams and stuff so abroad definitely they're breaking huge boundaries and stuff where locally I would say we a bit behind compared to other uh, in the, or other countries and stuff uh, but definitely we're moving in the right direction I mean with Gauteng we're the first women's team that officially got contracts it's not something that will allow us to stop working or something but it's definitely something contributing to our costs that we have at the moment and stuff so i think with hutting making a move I'll, i almost said let's put the challenge out there and see what other problems will 
hand out contract snakes and from there we can only build and get better so yeah it's we're getting there slowly but we're not there yet i'm glad you say that Yulani. and while you're there i want to say shout out to imperial we see what you're doing for housing women's cricket and as Yulani just alluded to that sponsorship and getting contracts out there absolutely amazing and you know, we can't ask for anything more because we want the game to grow and with equal opportunity, exactly. for both boys and for girls. Mm, no, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, they definitely, they raised the bar there with Imperial coming on board and stuff. And I actually put out the challenge there to all other provinces to go, or even um, major companies to go out there and sponsor women's cricket and not just women's cricket, but women's sport. because there's definitely a future in women's sport and especially cricket as well. And it's an entertaining game. People, there's a lot of, compared to four or five years ago, you would get on the plane, people would ask you, oh, what are you, what are you guys playing? Oh, no, we're playing cricket. Oh, really? I didn't know there's women's cricket. Where now you get on the plane and they actually, they know about it. So we're definitely getting there. There's more exposure, but we still have quite a bit to go and stuff. One hundred percent, and you, you've nailed it on the head there. And for me, another big stride that was taken in twenty nineteen was the launch of that women's super league that you were a, a part of, and you, you bought pretty tightly in that one. Yeah, I tried. Um, I think I was very fortunate. I, the last two three years, I've been in my best form as well, especially T Twenty cricket. I do bowl quite well in the T Twenties, and especially opening the bowling as well. And um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be part of the first two Super Leagues. Unfortunately, I had to withdraw from the recent one that took place. Uh, I decided that getting married was a bit more important than playing a bit of cricket. So, yeah, um, but besides that, I think for the Super League, I think the next step is maybe to get one or two international cricketers per team in. And so this year was the first time, or December was the first time we had to have X amount of under 19 players as well. So hopefully by the end of this year, we'll be able to get some international players in as well. Yeah, no, certainly, Yelani. And for you, first and foremost, that is actually a fine because in the cricketing circles, you don't get married during the season. You get married in off season. And if you are going to get married in the, in the season, get married not on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. But I thought, ah, oh, COVID. So it might save me there, but unfortunately, it didn't. No, you, you do carry the fine, but my, my congratulations to you and wish you all the Thank happiness you. in the future. Thank you. So I want to jump back to what, what, what we're talking about earlier now with, with your academy that you have started. And I did see that there was a few clinics that you, you and your team did put out now during lockdown even. And how's that going? Yeah, um, so basically I went into partnership with one of our one of my colleagues with the academy and stuff, and we decided to call it the Ulani Furi Cricket Academy. I think it's just it's a bold move to have a female cricket academy running at a boys' school as well. And it's been it's been good. We had a very good turnout in October and we had one now just before end of school, and our next one is actually in two weeks' time, just before school starts again. And it's been good. It's so we've been doing the clinics and stuff, and we had very good turnouts, all young boys and stuff. Um, but obviously, from there, we we're going to work on expanding it a bit more. Girls are welcome to come. Obviously, it's a bit difficult if you have one girl and 20 boys, so it will be a bit awkward. But the idea is maybe in the future just to have a girls' clinic or something like that as well, just to start getting them exposed and then eventually start mixing a bit as well. Because I believe playing with boys, you will learn so much as girls. And for boys playing with girls, they will learn a lot as well. And just looking at teaching at a boys' school, and they actually have a female teacher that actually understands cricket, they can talk cricket to her, that type of thing. It just opened their eyes so much as well. So if they could play a bit with girls, girls as well, it will broaden their eyes as well. And the girls will learn a lot more, that type of thing. 
So yeah, so I think with the academy, it's definitely we're going in the right direction. And yeah, we're doing private coaching as well during the after school. With COVID, it made it a bit easier because there weren't any sports school after school. So we'll see now when um, sports schools, uh, school sports starts again, how the afternoons will work. Um, so yeah, so there's big plans for the academy coming up, but we're building it slowly. Absolutely phenomenal. And congratulations to you for getting that started. And as you said, a bold move, putting your name up front. And I love to see that. I love to see growth in the women's game. And, you know, here locally in South Africa, you've seen Chandra Fritz, um, first women's match referee. And yeah. in the test match today, I don't know if you saw, um, Claire Polisak, mm, the first saw, fourth yeah. umpire, female fourth umpire. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And you can see that there is strides being made in the women's game. No, definitely. And I think it 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 puts out or it, it gives a message to all the girls that's out there that if you're not necessarily or if you're not gonna make it playing cricket, there's other options. There's umpiring, there's scoring, there's match referees, there's you can go ICC level with it and stuff. So there's definitely a career in cricket for female cricketers or females now. No, 100%. And, and you've nailed it on the head there. And while you're talking about everyone else, I want to come back to you, Yelani. And a little birdie tells me that you used to ball seam up and you got lazy and decided to ball off spin. <laughs> Something like that. I don't think it was lazy, though. I could never control the seam up ball. Um, it always went down legs. So I just decided, well, my coach decided, oh, you know what? You're anyway medium pace, so let's make you a spinner. Um, so it was the late Kovis route that turned me into off spinner. And yeah, I can't look back from that. The best choice I ever made, if you think about it. And yeah, I, I, thanks to the off spinning, I traveled the world basically. 100%. And I was going to say that you, you've saved yourself a long run up. Um, and you've gone on, you've played for the Pro Tiers, you've done such a phenomenal job. And you've played in World Cups, you've played all over the world, which is an absolute inspiration. And I want to take you back a few steps here and tell me about your test debut. Yeah, what an honor that was. Um, South Africa has only played two tests in the whole of their careers. And I was fortunate enough to play in one of them. Um, it didn't go according to plan. I, I think I managed to pick up one wicket for like 70 runs or something. Uh, so India gave us a run for our money, but they used to playing test cricket and stuff. So I, just for me to be part of that one test out of two tests South Africa have ever played was, it's such an honor and that clothing will last a lifetime in my cupboard or not my cupboard, but on the wall somewhere. And, um, yeah, so there was a few girls that's still playing with me now as well. I can, um, Kuli that um, plays Houting with me, she actually debuted with, with me um, in that test. And yeah, I think it's just, it's something different. It's definitely something for women's cricket if we practice it a lot more. But I think, I don't know, I think it was four years last where there was actually a women's test play. So it's actually, it's sad to see that that format is slowly disappearing because um, I know it's normally the top four teams that plays a test or plays test matches. I think England and Australia will still have their Ashes because I believe the women play Ashes as well. Um, but other than that, there's hardly any um, time cricket or test cricket or anything. And I think it's something we can move towards, especially where women's cricket is going at the moment. I think there's definitely a future for test cricket. So fingers crossed that we can move in that direction again. 100%. And uh, for me, like you've said, only two test matches, we want to see more cricket played and we want to see more of you on the park because if you remember that game, like you said, yes, you went for 70 odd, but you got uh, Kamimi out who got 192 on the day. So for me, you'd have been the best bowler on the day, isn't it? <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> well, if you get someone out before they get to 200, I think that is quite a good wicket, eh? Yeah, 100%. And you, you've nailed it there. And look, 
We at Africa Sports Consultancy, probably the first time you've heard of us, um, but we are trying to make moves, we're trying to make strides, and recently I've just launched our website, which you managed to have a look at in the week. How did you find that? Yeah, I think it's quite cool. It's um, definitely something that we can look into. I was fortunate enough to do the goal setting spot, and it's something, it's, it's things that we take for granted, and Sometimes putting things on paper is more important than just keeping it in your mind. And for me, actually going through the goal settings one um, actually opened my eyes and made me realize, hey, I've achieved so many of my goals already, but there's still so many goals that I want to achieve. And just to put it on paper actually makes such a difference where I was actually sitting there, I'm like, oh, but I've got all these goals and they're in my mind and stuff, but you tend to forget about it where as soon as you put it on paper, you can print it or you write it out or whatever it might be. And you actually put it where you're going to see it every day. It's, it's going to motivate you so much more. And just to do go through the goal settings, it just made me realize again, hey, but I've got still a few goals that I want to achieve. One of my goals was to play for South Africa. I managed to do that. One of my biggest goals was to be the best off spinner in the world. Um, that could still be possible, but I believe I'm the best off spinner currently in the country. So that's definitely a goal that I've achieved as well. And um, yeah, so being captain as well, those type of things. And what's nice with the whole goal setting thing is it's not just performance wise, it's mentally, it's physically, it's it covers all aspects. So it's definitely something, um, not just cricket, but future athletes or current athletes need to look at just to instead of having their goals in their minds actually put it on paper as well and using your website is the ideal place to start thank you for those kind words Yolani you know the team has worked very hard over the last six months to put all of that together so hearing that sort of feedback is is very motivating and um, if we can help one or two people we are more than happy. And, and as you said, one of you, you've had lots of goals that you've ticked off. Um, and for me, from my side, one more question. You've, you've captained the Lions, you've captained SAA. Can we see you captaining the Proteas in the future? Oh, I, would have, I would love to. I don't think it will happen. Um, but if that, if that opportunity do come around, I'll definitely grab it with two, two hands. Um, I was fortunate enough to captain the SAA side. And oh, what an honor that was. And we managed to win all our games with the whole tournament. Um, so that was one of my highlights of my career. Besides uh, scoring the winning runs against India, my, my second tour. Uh, but definitely captaining a national side that, or even SAA side is just it's phenomenal. And even with now with the Lions captaining and stuff, you you know you're in control or you're leading 20 goals and they're there to feed off you, they're there to learn from you. And that's the whole point of a leader. You need to be there, you need to lead the team and take the punch if things doesn't go according to plan as well. So it's not just about the sunshine and roses. Sometimes you need to take the thunder as well. Wow. Milani, I would play under you. You can be my captain anytime. Um, people, everyone watching at home, this is Yolani Faree, current Lions ladies captain, and she's joined us here on the show tonight. So we've got about five minutes left for anyone watching at home. Um, please pop us some questions in the chat uh, that you'd like to ask to Yolani, and I can come back to them. Yolani, you, you, you did say one of your proudest moments was hitting the winning runs. Um, for me, I, I, I always find that quite interesting you know you've got everyone who bats sort of in the lower order they, they, they rate their bats so I'd like to know what you think you what do you think of your batting do you think the coach is batting a little bit low there yeah currently I think so um I was I think the third highest run scorer last season for the Lions so I think I'm being underestimated with with the bat but internationally or national team wise I don't mind batting at nine ten because I know the, the those who bat in front of me are better than me. But just to go through that, we I think I batted at 10, maybe even at 11 for South Africa. And um, yeah, so we were playing India. We I think we were 20 runs short or something. I went in and I just started sweeping. 
and sweeping and sweeping. And that's how we managed to win with one wicket. So it was definitely an honor to score those runs, to help the team over the line. Winning India in India is something very few teams achieve. And so I think that's definitely one of my highlights. And yeah, so yeah, I think my batting is a bit underrated. I believe I'm an all-rounder. Not everyone believes that. But I'll always chip in the 20, 30 runs at the end. So this season, hopefully if we get it some games in, I'm aiming for those 50s instead of the 30s. Well, Yelani, it's a good thing you came here because I'm sure your coach is watching somewhere and he's hearing all of this. So coach, please, um, on behalf of Yelani and all of South Africa, we are asking you, please batter higher up. <laughs> and look, we, we've just had a question now popped in by by one of your teammates, actually, uh, Sean, she's, she's asking, what can we expect from you and the CGL Lionesses once the season starts? And it's a question from Sydney, who's watching with us. Yeah, I think um, from my side, personally, definitely keeping or uh, carrying on with my form that I've had the last two seasons. Um, obviously, keeping it consistent, picking up those wickets type of thing. As a captain, I've made a bold statement and early in the season already and I, I basically said we're going for the win for the ODIs we're using T20s as um, as a growth platform for the youngsters and stuff so we're definitely aiming to take the title with 50 over games and so yeah so I'm going to push for that and if anyone asks why I'm going so hard at them it's because we're going for the win well there we go the skipper has spoken and uh, we expect the lionesses to roar in response. Definitely. Fantastic. Uh, I'm just checking the chat here quickly to see if there's another question coming up. Um, yeah, my, my connection on my phone is not so great, but I'll, I'll give another minute. But while I wait for that, right. there's a question that we always like to ask that we, it would be criminal if we let you walk away without answering. And it's from us. What? What can you tell a young girl or a young boy out there watching and they don't necessarily have to play cricket, but they want to make a life for themselves in school? What is the best advice that you could give them? I think something I've learned over the years is it's never too late. And the harder you push, the further you'll get. And hard work always beats talent. So the harder you work, you'll definitely get there. Um, and the thing is, you, you should never give up because if you if you look at it, some of the greatest sportsmen, sportswomen that's out there, peak late in their careers. So if you look at cricketers, most of them peak at age 28, 29. So if you don't make it at age 20 or after school or even 25, it's fine. Just keep working hard. Your time will come. If you're good enough, it will definitely come. Just don't give up. Absolute gem of, an, of, of advice there from Yelani. Yelani, we have one more. We can take one more question. Um, and I think I'll pick Perfect. this one, which is from um, Anisindoro. He says, how do you compensate for your weaknesses? I'm guessing this around your technique. Yeah, I think um, obviously you need to know your weaknesses, understand your strength as well. And obviously if you bat ball, that type of thing, uh, play according to your strength and make the make the opponent uh, play, to, uh, how can I say, to their weaknesses, basically. So you force them to play their weakness instead of you playing your weakness. And if you understand your own game, not just cricket, but any game, and you understand your weaknesses, you know what to go work on, you know how to improve it. If you don't get a coach to help you improve your weaknesses, that type of thing. But in general, focus on the strength that you've got, um, with me, I know sometimes I'll bowl a ball short. So with that, I've got protection. But I don't focus on the bad ball because I know that's my weakness. So I focus on the strength, which will be my five out of six balls. That's brilliant. So I'll obviously focus on that. I'll set the field according to that. And if the one weakness pops out, it's one of those things. But you've compensated for it. You've covered that type of thing because you know your weakness. The problem is if you don't know your weakness. And I think with regards to that, the best thing is to start understanding your own game, uh, whichever sport it might be, 
and understand your strength, understand your weakness. And while you're working on your strength to improve it, work on your weakness to improve it as well. So to turn it into a strength. Wow, Ilani, thank you so much. But I, I, I'm here scribbling all these notes because this is advice that is golden and I'm sure anyone who's watching out there will definitely take this on. And look, for us, we invited you here and you've completely blown us away. Thank you so, so much for taking time out and coming on the show and hopefully you will keep in touch and hopefully again, you will go look at our website and see if there's anything else that's useful for you. No, definitely. I think thank you for having me and thank you for all the listeners that came on to listen as well. And I hope I gave some good advice and yeah, thank you. 100%. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Yolani Free. Um, Protein Lioness is captain and Protea who kindly joined us this evening and spent some time and she threw out some gems there and lots of wisdom that she gave out. Everyone who's come out and watched, thank you so, so much. And we appreciate your support. And, you know, it's a new year. It's a good time to set your goals. Go out there, set them, drive, and you can certainly get there. Let's remember that COVID is still a reality. Let's keep looking after ourselves. Keep looking after your loved ones. Keep sanitizing those hands. And until next week, it's goodbye from me and take care.